So we have 3x plus 8 quantity squared. Well, what does that really mean? It means we have two of those, and we're going to multiply those together. So we're going to have 3x plus 8, and we're going to write out a second one, 3x plus 8. Because we know that if we have anything like 3 to the second power, that just means 3 times 3, or that term times itself. So it's no different with a binomial. You just have to write two of them out. Okay, now when we multiply binomials together, we're going to FOIL it first, outer, inner, last. That's what we did in the last lesson. But these have a special pattern. So let's take 3x times 3x. That gives us 9x squared. Now notice that is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square because we're taking 3 and we're squaring it. Okay, our outer term is 3x times 8, which is 24x. Our inner term is 8 times 3x, which is also 24x. Now, that is not a coincidence. Every single time you square a, a binomial, the middle terms are going to be the same when you do outer and inner. Okay, and then when we do the last, we're going to take 8 times 8, which is 64. And since these signs are all positive, it makes it fairly easy. Everything's just positive. Now, if you'll notice, the 9x squared, the first term, is a perfect square. If you'll notice, the 64, the last term, is a perfect square. And that's really just the first and the last term squared, right? Okay, now for the middle term. You can add those and combine those together, and they add up to 48. So we have a positive 48x. Okay, so there's a little pattern going on here from the original problem. If you look, when you have a perfect square, you're going to square the first term, you're going to square the last term, and then you can actually just multiply the first and the last term together and then double it to get that middle term. Okay, so let's look at a couple of these and see if we can figure out this pattern. Okay. So let's look at, and this one's not on your note-taking guide, but I just want to show you another example. If you had 2x plus, let's say, 3, and you're going to square that, okay? The first term would be this first term squared, which is 2x squared. Let me write it like this. It would be the first term quantity squared, which would be 4x squared. The last term would be the last term squared, which is 9. Okay, now to get this middle term, we're going to multiply these two together, but then double it because of the outer and the inner concept. Okay, so if you take that and multiply 2x times 3, that's going to give us 6x. But we need to double that, so we're going to multiply it times 2 to double it, which will give us 12x. And that is the product. So it's a kind of neat little pattern. Okay, multiply the first, multiply the last, multiply and double for the middle. Okay, so let's try a couple of these. Let's look at number two on your note-taking guide. We have m minus 3n. Now we've got a subtraction, so you got a little more to think about with the signs. But let's see, the first term is going to be m times m, or m squared. And you can write it out as m minus 3, uh, 3n times m minus 3n if it helps you. Then I'm going to take this negative 3 and I'm going to square it for the back term. And that's going to give me positive 9n squared. Whoops, that's a 9. So I have m quantity squared, and that's just n, m squared. And then I have negative 3 n quantity squared, and that gives me positive 9 n squared. Now let's talk about the multiplying for the middle, okay? Remember we're going to do outer and inner, or we can just take these two terms, multiply and double. Well, 1 m times negative 3 n will give me negative 3 m n, but then I'm going to double it. So I'm going to take m times negative 3 n, multiply those and double times 2. That's a 2 right there. So that's going to give me negative 6mn. And that would be our answer. Okay? It was a little more involved because we had a variable in the back this time, didn't we? Okay, so let's try the pq one. Okay, we have p minus q. 
we have P minus Q, all quantity squared. Okay, let's first write it out, P minus Q times P minus Q. And if this is confusing to you at all, just FOIL it. But if you're getting the pattern, remember we just square for the first term, so we get P squared, square for the last term. Well, negative Q times negative Q is positive Q squared. And then we're going to multiply and double for the middle, so we're going to get negative 2 PQ. And that would be the product, okay? That would be